Hello guys and girls on House Japanese, this is Kathy Cat. All living things sooner or later come to an end and so does every life on this planet sooner or later meets it fatal, fatal end. And on that note, we're going to talk about death in Japan right now. So uh, and since we want to talk about death in Japan, we're going to grab a Japanese person which is going to be the director and we're going to kill the director and find out how much death in Japan actually is. Let's go and kill the director. Now, first we need to think about the burial. Now, in countries like the USA and similar, actually a proper burial on the ground is the general custom, while in Japan it's actually cremation. Now, this is actually the most common way in Japan. It's not the only way, there's still burial, but cremation is the main way right now, but it only has been the main way for the last 150 years. So why did that change? It used to be that Japanese people were actually buried underground, but then they ran out of space is one of the reasons that people are saying, well, cremation became a thing. So also another thing is because they ran out of space, it became a custom that people of the same family shared the same grave. So if someone says, Isho no ohaka ni harimashou ne, it could actually mean let's become family because only family can be put together in the same grave. Maybe this is kind of romantic. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe a cultural thing. Also, burying someone in person became a little bit of a sanitary issue and the image it got attached to it that it's kind of unsanitary and might spread diseases and similar and cremation was seen as a cleaner way to say goodbye to the person and bury them. But as you know, Japan has a lot of religions and those again have different rituals for dealing with the body once it, the soul has passed on and such and such depending on what the religions believe in so you can actually choose cremation or burial still here in japan so how much will we have to pay for the funeral of our dear director now first of all funerals here in japan they don't come cheap the average for a funeral in japan is two million yen which comes up to eighteen thousand dollars so this is more on the coastly side than maybe in comparison in the west and there are a couple of reasons that come to it for example the gdp and the general population is pretty high and a lot of people are spending a lot of money on it the cost, however, can change depending on the area and what kind of religious funeral you're having. So is it a Buddhist one? Is it a Shintoist one? Um, depending on that, the prices will actually change. Body transfer and keeping of the body is one of the things that will have to be dealt with. So if the director died in a hospital and not by his colleague stabbing him to death, then it first will have to get moved from the hospital to home and then to the funeral hall. And then the body will have to be fixed up, stitched, preserved, similar things like that to make sure, maybe even put some, some makeup on the director, just make sure he looks a little bit more healthy. Number two, a funeral hall. Now, first, the body of the director will be with his family. They actually bring it home after they've been prepped and preserved it for one up to about up to three days, depending um, probably also on the season and similar things like that and on the family and how long they want to do that. And then from there, a special car, a dekusha, um, you know, a funeral car will then actually bring him then all the way over to a specific funeral hall. Next step is the funeral aka ceremonial hall where there will be a huge picture of him and there will be flowers all over the place and then other things, ornaments, altars, pillows, candles, decorations, all kinds of things will be in that funeral hall and people will be invited to come for that one. This is around the time when you can also submit government information and documents for the person who has passed away and make sure all that paperwork also gets handled. Number three, cremation hall. Now it's actually time for the ceremony and the director's family and closest people in his circle, friends and similar, will be invited. Maybe the murderers even among them. That hall is generally run by the government, so I suggest the city hall and similar. And there's also, and the Japanese Ministry of Health 
Labor and Welfare also has the National Crematory Database where we could in theory cremate the director. So there's a whole database for that one including addresses, home pages, telephone numbers and such. So for example first the director's body stays for a day at his family's then he moves over to the funeral hall where everyone can come and say goodbye and thank you and then he moves over to the cremation hall which is more private where only the family and the closest relatives come and say goodbye to him and then he's going moving he's going to be moving towards cremation so that's when he gets cremated yeah i think i got that now next is food and I don't mean the food during the celebrations that happened before or the like ceremonies before where everyone said goodbye and thank you uh, there is actually a custom of eating a type of bento while the person is getting cremated so while the director is getting cremated which is gonna take a couple of hours uh, the family sits together and has a bento that bento is called shojin otoshi and is the idea of you know, by eating, you kind of consume life. And it's a, st a new stage for all those brave people to start a new stage in their lives and to also consume life for their own lives and start a new stage in life. That lunchbox can contain different things. Sometimes it's very Japanese traditional styles and similar, or it can contain sushi and such. Thank you, director. While researching, there are actually different types of funeral. Actually, four different main types. One is the common funeral, the family funeral, the one-day funeral, and the direct funeral. Number one is the ipanso, the common funeral, which means it's the most basic funeral, the most common one that is practiced here in Japan. And that's the one where it's family invited, but also, you know, relatives, friends, maybe even work colleagues, maybe accidentally even his murderer is going to be invited. And that funeral costs from 1 million up to 2 million yen, depending on how many people come and say goodbye. Number two. Kazakusu, meaning the family funeral. So generally only the closest members of the family will be invited. So it is a lot cheaper at 600,000 up to 800,000 yen. In Japan, generally people bring money to the funeral to say thank you and goodbye. The reason for that being is that generally the visitors of a funeral bring money with them, kind of condolences, money, and they give that to the family. And of course, the less people you invite, the less of that money. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> the less of that money you'll get. <laughs> In Japan, it's generally custom that if you go to a funeral, you bring some money and hand that over to the family, the beret family. And if you don't invite that many people, that money is kind of not gonna get towards the funeral and similar things like that. So I think Japanese people have to balance this out whether they do a normal funeral, which is at the start very expensive, but depending how many people come in, it might get lower in price because those people bring some money with them. Number three is the one day funeral. You can already tell by the name that everything is done in one day. So instead of all the different ceremonies and the different steps, everything is handled in one day, which makes it a lot cheaper at 500,000 to 700,000 yen for the whole procedure of the funeral, all done in one day. Oh. And then the next one is the direct funeral. That's when you go straight to cremation and that's about it. You send them off into the cremation hall and that is the cheapest one. Bye. Another big problem here is fraud. As you know, Japan is a cho kode shakai, meaning a super aging population. It's a big problem here right now. So for funerals, there's a quite a lot of chances for some people to actually cause some fraud, make some fraud happen. And one of the issues is, think about it. Right now, you have so many ways of customizing anything that you can even customize the funerals. Certain flowers, what type of flowers are going to be using, what kind of urns are they going to be using, are they going to be a posh urn or a porcelain urn, do you going to make it out of platinum with gold. You can have so many options of choosing things that it's sometimes a little bit difficult to see through and that gives a chance to some people to cause some fraud, scam some people, that kind of stuff. There are reality TV shows in Japan that talk about that. 
So it gets a little more trickier and trickier. Also, what some people actually can now do is they can estimate their own funeral in advance and then find out how much that would actually be before they actually pass away. As I am on the train in Japan, I usually like just looking around and reading all the different commercials that you can see on the train. And a lot of times a commercial that I didn't even know uh, would be a commercial for a funeral, similar things like that. Sometimes I just caught myself out and just go like, director, what does that mean? And it's like, that's for a funeral. And this, oh, that's for a funeral too. So there's a lot of things and a lot of businesses around the, the funerals here in Japan. Of course, we have an aging population, so a lot of funerals are happening. And I find it interesting that people can go in themselves and actually estimate their own funeral. The director says he does, he thinks that's a very unique Japanese thing. Does that exist in your country? Do you know? If so, let us know in the comments down below. So, we now know what would happen if someone stabbed the director and we had to cremate him. But <laughs> this situation has not happened and is not going to happen. Not at all, director. And <laughs> therefore, we just take this as information and reference for the future that we hopefully don't have to confront. I wish you a lovely day. No matter where in the world you are, please be careful. It is, these are some very challenging years. So please look after yourself and the ones you care about. Stay healthy, stay happy. And I'll catch you soon with more videos here coming out from Tokyo to you, no matter where in the world you are. Take care of yourself and I'll catch you soon on Astro Bye.